Okay, so now here we are back in the uh, master bath. Jake's gonna start getting everything set up that we've previously staged. So now Jake's gonna make sure to connect the uh, lead hose to the pretreatment so that when the pressure is on there, it doesn't make it hard to connect. And he's gonna put that right into the corner over there by the door and the shower so we're not, um, so we're not stretching. We wanna be able to get that corner real clean too. Now he's gonna take the solution hose and he's gonna wrap it out to the truck. You'll notice that we don't have the vacuum hose in the way anymore. And that's by design because as we're pre-treating, we don't wanna be fighting with our vacuum hose and spraying detergent on our vacuum hose and missing areas with the vacuum hose uh, that we need to get the pre-treatment into. So he's going to wrap this out and now you're going to see where we have the uh, pre-treatment, excuse me, the uh, vacuum hose pre-staged is right here on the tile. And to make it easier, we actually just ran it along the edge there. We didn't want to pull it all the way out of the house and you can see our inline filter. We took all of the debris out of there. So we'll get a, a good accurate feel for um, what's left when we do the steam cleaning. So we're gonna go ahead and connect up the truck. We're gonna start pre-treating and we'll show you that as we do it. Get the machine started again, thanks. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're shampooing the carpet. In carpet cleaning, we have four letters we call CHAT. Chemical, heat, agitation, and time. Now anytime that you uh, increase any one of those things in the cleaning process, you get better results. So the shampooer gives us more agitation, and you can see in this case, it's actually still pulling up more dog hair out of the carpet. These are counter-rotating brushes. Some companies will use uh, spinning brushes like a floor machine with a brush. Now that will void the warranty on a stain master carpet. This doesn't hurt the twist on the fiber which is heat set in the factory. Since the counter rotating brushes they're actually just gently rubbing the, the uh, fiber from the base up and pulling all that stuff that's deep set in there. We're going to do this across all the traffic areas and then we're going to begin the final rinse with the steam cleaning unit, the uh, extraction. Okay, so you saw that we very carefully cleaned this, uh, vacuumed this carpet, and uh, we recommended the shampooing here because as you can see, even after a very thorough and very powerful vacuuming, and this homeowner vacuums her carpet, she says, up to three or four times a week, you can see all the fur that's still being pulled out of the carpet. This is a lot of fur. We've seen this throughout the entire home. So this is a, um, a Shampooing is not necessarily just for tough traffic areas. It's a great addition whenever the customer has uh, large dogs or, or multiple dogs. Okay, so at this point we're finally to the extraction routine. We're going to rinse out all of the uh, pretreatment that we've agitated with the um, shampooer. Now, in this area, we have both high traffic by the, uh, by the vanities and we have less traffic over by the shower. So Dave's going to demonstrate single wet stroke. He's pulling back and he's running the jets as he pulls back. And then he's got two dries because the jets are behind the orifice where the vacuum is. So we're getting a double dry stroke here. Now he's going to do a double wet. As he gets into the traffic, he's just going to keep the jets on continuously. And then after he does that, he goes back over with a dry stroke, a good, long, thorough dry stroke. One of the problems that people have with steam cleaning is that the carpets stay wet a long time. A premier cleaning company is going to dry the carpets well. And in fact, one of the things we're concerned about as we start to steam clean is our drying plan. And we'll talk about that using the uh, installed air move or installed uh, ceiling fans and air movers very soon. All right, here we are to the living room. All the furniture has been moved to its marks. You can see right there, the furniture mark, the indentation. We only move it to its marks. Now he's gonna be able to wand back behind here in a straight row, and then the furniture goes back right away, and then it'll get blocked. Now, as, as Jake is starting to do that, I wanna point out our drying plan will include these ceiling fans. Now, everybody learns about hot air, 
in Albuquerque because of the hot air balloons. And the first thing you're taught about hot air is it's lighter. So up at the ceiling, we're gonna have hotter air and it's gonna be drier air. So by using the feet ceiling fan to blow that hot, dry air down, that will allow for faster evaporation. Okay, so now Jake is gonna move the piece of furniture back to its clean spot. We clean behind there. And now he's gonna be careful. He's got a long block there. He's gonna lift one side just slightly, just far enough to get his block underneath of, and he cracks it off. So you can see he just cracks it off. Don't have to lift it much. You don't have to crank your back. And he's gonna get on his knee so he's not cranking his back. He's gonna be careful not to crank the furniture too much to throw it off the blocks he's already put in. And it's done. Okay, Coach, you can see here where Jake has edged the very different color of the clean carpet versus the dirty carpet, or at least the carpet that hasn't been cleaned yet. We've been seeing that the change in the color at every step. We saw a change in the tint of the uh, carpet when we were vacuuming, then when we shampooed, and now especially as we're rinsing out all that dirt that we've loosened up. And before I told you, we were gonna get the ceiling fan going. That's our accelerated drying process right there. That's installed drying uh, pieces. We also have installed air movers throughout the rooms that we've cleaned. This is part of our premier carpet cleaning. Generally, we would have one air mover we'd leapfrog through. In this case, we're doing a premier service for this client. So we have four air movers. This carpet will be nearly dry when we're done. The only caveat is we're adding Teflon, which is more moisture. done the steam cleaning now. Jake is going to start going down the machine. We do a little bit of housekeeping every time because we want to clean up the uh, things that we gather from each job. Jake, solution hose. So what Jake's doing right now is he's cooling down the machine by placing a, an open-ended hose we call the bleed hose onto his pressure line. Now he's going to turn his pumps on. Toggle first. And he's going to go ahead and cool the machine down because right now, hold on for a second, the machine is at about 220 degrees. We want to turn that, we want to cool that down to about 180 before we shut it down. Now you can see his wand is dirty, so rather than waste this water, we're always going to wash off our wand so that when we walk into a customer's home, our wand is nice and clean and we don't have some dog hair from the last home. We want our equipment to be clean. We wash our hoses down every uh, week so that they're nice and clean. And also, this inline filter that we use to uh, capture a lot of the uh, debris and, and uh, dirty water and such like that. We're gonna clean that after every job. A lot of times we'll clean it after the pre-vac too because it's built up so much so much uh, debris. So Jake's gonna open that up. And while we're still cooling off the machine, we're just gonna go ahead and rinse that down and get all that dirt out of there so next time we have a nice clean one, and if the client wants to see what we've actually removed from their home, they're seeing only what we've removed from their home. So that's how we clean it down. At the end of the day, the last job of the day, there's a port right here. We're gonna put some WD-40 into that that goes right into the blower. You slide that valve open and squirt some W. And squirt some WD-40 in there. Yep. Open it and just squirt a little WD-40 in there. And then that helps the blower to stay in good shape. Now we're going to talk about putting down Teflon. All right, you may or may not have noticed as I was showing you various things that right at the beginning of this job, we ran a water hose to our onboard water tank. When we came here, the tank was full, and that's the way I like it. And when we leave here, our tank will be full again. So. What we're doing is we run a hose early on, we're doing our setup, and now when we're standing out here wrapping up the truck, you can see Jake has already put the hoses back, the shampooers back, and a lot of the tools are back in the truck at this point. We're gonna be able to watch this. If we overfill this, precious water in the desert is gonna be spilling down the street, and we certainly don't want that, and our customers will uh, have their sensibilities offended by that as well. All right, so Jake's getting ready to apply the Teflon. He's gonna go on an east-west, east-west pattern. And then to ensure even coverage, 
he's gonna go north, excuse me, north, south, north, south. All right, so Teflon is a product that coats the fibers of the carpet, and it also um, fills in the cracks. And what that does, it makes it slick like your Teflon pan. So more than anything else, it's there to provide protection against the wear of abrasives, the dry soils. But it also creates a chemical barrier that doesn't allow certain things to bond, especially to nylon. It's most important with nylon. Your polyesters and your olefins, they don't really need Teflon, and it's not even part of the uh, uh, part of the protection package. Now, with Teflon, the important thing is putting down the proper amount of the product, and then raking it in so that it gets the entire fiber coated. So the next thing we're going to show you after we get done coating the carpet is we're going to show you how we rake it in. Okay, so now we follow the IICRC or S100, which is the Professional Guide for Carpet Cleaning. And uh, believe it or not, it's about an inch thick book, and it explains all the steps for properly cleaning a carpet. And Premier Carpet Cleaning includes all these steps. In our city, most of the time people don't understand the importance of, of uh, having the job done right, and they, and they think that um, the less they spend, typically the better, so they typically get what they pay for. Now, Premier Carpet Cleaning is going to allow your carpet to stay cleaner, last longer, and actually it will it will uh, look better over a longer period of time, and you'll spend less money on maintenance than you would otherwise. And then of course the the uh, replacement cost. Now Jake is is uh, doing the final step. We've already applied the Teflon, and regardless of whether you apply Teflon or not, you would want to groom the carpet. What this does is it puts it into a position where the carpet dries more full looking, and actually allows it to dry more quickly. So these are two important factors that go into the grooming. Now there are times when people don't want their carpet groomed and a lot of those are commercial applications like a property manager or a realtor because part of what they want people to know is that they absolutely did have the carpet cleaned and those wand marks are one of the, uh, the key elements to that. So here we are just about done here, just about leaving this house looking as beautiful as possible. And a few more comments at the end and thank you very much. Okay, so Jake's got the, uh, no, just use the, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, Jake's got the, um, the Hydroforce container that we use to put the Teflon down. Now, Teflon will bond to almost anything, so we got to make sure that whether we're using a pump-up sprayer or we're using a Hydroforce, we need to rinse that Teflon out of there and get it all nice and clean before we put that tool away. Otherwise, that stuff will be stuck in there. It is a fluoropolymer, which is very much like a plastic. Okay, so he's going to clean that container out now. So as Jake's getting this uh, this uh, jug cleaned out and everything, the process that we just took you through, Premier Carpet Cleaning, is the process that we do. We are a um, emergency restoration company. Our thing is that we get it back to good. So if you're watching this video, chances are you're learning, you're going through the qualifications process to become a carpet cleaning technician. And so you need to not cut any of the corners that we've just gone over. We're never going to press you for time. You need to make sure that you do everything correctly. Our thing is to please people and to have high quality job. Now, if we do a high quality job, and even if our price is twice as much as the um, Acme cleaner down the road, we're still going to impress the people if they see the difference in the quality they get, the longevity of their second, excuse me, third highest investment is your flooring in your home. So don't you take care of your car? Don't you take care of your house? Why wouldn't you want to take care of your third largest investment, which is your home flooring? So now that Jake's got fresh water in there, he's going to go ahead and start up the machine and he's going to flush the Hydroforce with the pressure pump that he used to uh, apply the Teflon. And once again, like I said, whether we're using a Hydroforce or a pump up sprayer, flushing that product out of there to make sure that that tool doesn't get destroyed is key. So that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching.